Hey guys, Ranch Boss here. The title of this video is going to be, I don't know, something like, is it true, can I hunt in Texas for free? Or can I knock on ranchers' doors and hunt for free? That's gonna be somewhat the uh, subject of this video. And it, to, to make the long answer short, with one word, the answer is no, and here's the reasons why. Okay, let's say that you're from out of state, pick your state, Pennsylvania. I just had some guys leave the ranch this morning from Pennsylvania. They uh, came out here, they hunted, and they're on like a six or ten day journey. Had a great time, shot a bunch of hogs, and they asked me, where can we go hunt in the National Forest for free? So I'll address that and then I'll move on to knocking on people's doors. So Texas only has a few state forests or national forests in, in the first place. And people wonder, well, why is there only a few state forests or national forests in the state of Texas? Well, here's the answer. You have to go back to how Texas got started. Back in the 1820s, mid-20s, uh, Texas uh, was claimed, this area was claimed by Mexico, which took it from the French and you people have heard about the seven flags that have flown over Texas, multiple countries. Well, the last one, next to the last one, was Mexico, and they were giving away big parcels of land. Uh, for a family, they would give away 4,400 acres, and people were coming, this is in the 1820s, 18, early 1830s. People were coming from all over the United States to get their free 4,400 acres. They traveled uh, across the ocean in boats, uh, a lot of them died in, in these rickety boats and made it over here. The ones that made it, I promise you, they're not trying to go back home because they'll die in the ocean. It's terrible travel back then. Or people would travel across the United States from Missouri and back east where land was uh, very, very expensive. And here in Texas, they're giving away these big, big, big chunks of land. So the Mexican government, uh, they were called empresarios, which was the word uh, related to what a uh, realtor was back in the day. You'd go to the land office, see the empresario, he would give you his magical blessing, boom, boom, all of a sudden this free land is yours. He'd give you a map and all you had to do was go out and stake it out. Well, they failed to tell the people there was just one thing that they, they didn't mention. When you get there, you might have to fight off the Indians because that's really their land and you might have to fight for your life and kill them, and then not to uh, mention about all the marauders and banditos that were rampant running through the land. So these people had to, to fight hard, hard, hard to get their land. And then 1836, uh, the Mexican government decides they want their cannon back that they had given the people here in our local area, which Gonzales is where our ranch is at, and they told the settlers here, we want our cannon back uh, because you guys are getting rowdy and you're not uh, bowing to the tyranny that we're imposing on you. And as a result, here comes the Mexican army to get their cannon back because they felt that it would be used against them because they were really acting bad, a lot of uh, tyrannical activity towards the pioneers and the settlers. So they're on the Guadalupe River, just uh, north in, there in Gonzales, or south in Gonzales. The uh, Mexican army approached the Texans who were expecting them. In the meantime, the Texans had uh, crafted a flag, it's called the come and take it flag. It had a cannon, a star, and come and take it on there. You want the cannon, it's yours, but you're gonna have to come and take it. And that started the revolution with Mexico. Uh, fast forward six weeks later, the, the small hand of uh, uh, pioneers uh, under the uh, leadership of uh, General Samuel Houston slaughtered them in 17 minutes. They wiped out the Mexican army and a new nation was born, the nation of Texas. So, with all that background said, that's why there isn't much um, public land in the state of Texas because it was given away to the settlers and the men that were in the army. They were given big parcels of land as payment for their participation in the army. So, I don't know what percentage, 92, 93, 95% of all land in Texas is privately owned. So, you can't just go find a national or state forest. There are a few uh, to hunt in, but here's the deal with those. And I speak from experience. When I was younger, I tried it on for size and didn't much like it. So, let's say you find the national forest. They are so restrictive. Uh, number one, you can't be in there after dark. Uh, they're hundreds of thousands of acres big. No motorized vehicles. No camping. 
so how, how, just tell me how are you going to do that? And is it free to go into the national forest? Uh, that you may need a little cheap permit from uh, the state of Texas, uh, from the Texas Parks and Wildlife. But that right there means it's not free. You drove all the way into Texas, your expenses, you're going to have to stay in a, mo a motel or camping somewhere, uh, and you're going to have to pay a campground to stay there, and all your food you're going to have to pay for. Ain't nothing free about that, all right? So now you're going to go hog hunting on hundreds of thousands of acres, never been there, don't have time to, to scout. How do you think that's going to go for you? It ain't going to go well. Your chances are less than 1% of even seeing a hog in our state and national forest. It is a big waste of time, absolute waste of time. So there you go with uh, hunting the free land in Texas. Good luck. Okay, now let's talk about knocking on somebody's door and asking uh, the landowner, can you trespass and hunt on their property? There's there's several problems wrong with that. Uh, because of the way that uh, Texas was divided up and land was given to the people that gave their life uh, or had to fight for it, they were given this land, it's been passed down in many, many, many thousands of cases, it's still in the original families. So these people are fiercely protective of their land. And our trespass laws in Texas are very, very, very serious. You don't want to go onto somebody's land after dark, unannounced, without permission, under the penalty of death. Texas law, I wouldn't recommend it for the property owner, but Texas law does recognize the property owner's right to protect their land with lethal force to trespassers after dark. I'm not taking that chance personally. I'm a landowner here and I understand the severity of it. I'm not knocking on my neighbor's doors after dark. So let's just say that you want to knock on a, a rancher's or farmer's door during daylight. Well, there's problems with that too. Okay, number one, some of these homes are deep into the property and you are now officially trespassing the minute you crossed uh, th that property line. You are trespassing. So you go up to their house, you knock on the door unannounced, and I can speak from my own personal experiences, people are really jumpy when you knock on their door and they're not expecting you and you're a mile or half a mile into their property. That ain't a good thing to do. I've had to do it a few times uh, because of whatever circumstances uh, that I was in and uh, you better start talking real fast and not beat around the bush because they probably have a shotgun leaned up against the side of their door there. So you're going to ask them, hey, Mr. Rancher or Farmer, can I uh, hunt some hogs and help you out? Help you out? Are you kidding me? Wake up, people. That's a fantasy. Can I help you by coming out there and hunting for free on your property? Well, here's some problems with that. Number one, they don't know you. They don't know what your real intentions are. They don't know if you're a criminal trying to put a, a gun to their head when the minute they turn around. And they don't know if you're going to go out there and shoot a cow, even though any hunter that would do that is going to say, oh no, I'm responsible. I've been hunting for X number of years. I can be trusted. That's all lip service, guys. That rancher or farmer doesn't know you from Adam, and it is uh, unlikely that they're going to do that. Now, I understand because my customers come from all over the United States and, and all over Europe, but especially in some of our uh, Midwestern and, and Northern states, that that's more of a common practice to do something like that. That's not a common practice in Texas, guys. It's just not. So, even if you find that one in thousands of hunters that's going to let you or property owners that's going to let you trespass and they're going to trust you that you're not going to shoot a cow or a building or do something or even here's another concern that property owners are going to have what if you get hurt while running around on their land and there's a liability and you end up suing them because you stepped off in a hole and broke your leg or whatever shot your buddy he died and you're on their property that that landowner has no reason to take on the liability and risk to let you on their property. No way. And again, there could be some ignorant property owners that would let you do that deal, but it's still not free, guys. You've just traveled across the country or a state or two over, which has cost you money. There is no such thing as hunting free in Texas, unless you are the landowner or you're the grandson or relative of a landowner and even those things I have seen can get real dicey. Well, you know, I've been hunting on Uncle's Ranch for 
for uh, 10, 15 years, and now all of a sudden he's acting weird. Well, okay, so let's, the guy that told me that I'm thinking, so why is your uncle acting weird now and don't want you back out there? Well, because you just been sponging off of uncle for all these years. You never would go out there and give him a hand, and he, it's, it's a one-way street of him helping you, and you never do nothing with him, and all this time's gone by, and he's done with you, all right? So that wasn't free either. That just created animosity and division in that particular family. So these are things, guys, that, uh, uh, and we have a drawing every month where we give away hunts, and I pro and people will, sometimes people will want to hunt, and they'll get back to me and say, well, there ain't nothing free about this hunt. Well, guess what? I didn't say there is anything free. Read the fine print, and you will not find the word free in any of my stuff because you've heard it. There's nothing in life for free. But some people think that it's straight up free, that they're going to come out here. Some people think I'm going to pay for their airfare, pick them up in a limo, bring them to the ranch, tuck them in at night, do all this stuff. So these people are in a fantasy world. We do offer great hunting. We do have monthly drawings where we're giving away a $799 hunt. And all I ask, guys, pay the guide what he's worth, $33 a day. Who works for $33 a day? Our staff does and pay the butcher. What butcher shop are you going to take an animal, drop it off, and think he's going to process it up free for you? We're giving away a $799 hunt, and some people just can't appreciate that because of, oh, well, gee, well, if you can't throw this, that, and the other thing in, the airfare, the limo ride to and from the air, you're a scam, and I don't want anything to do with you. Well, God bless you, and may you have good hunting success in, in your hunting career with that attitude. But uh, anyway, guys, I just wanted to put that out there that uh, there's a lot of great opportunity all over the country for uh, greatly discounted hunts. But remember, there is nothing free in life, even if you're hunting on the uncle's ranch. So y'all have a good day. We'll see you on the next hunt.